There they are, the Chris Sims defensive tackle draft rankings for 2023. And to no surprise, all alone at number one, tier one, despite all the questions, off field, on field, does he love football? Does he not love football? Does he work hard? Yada, yada. Jalen Carter, the Georgia defensive tackle, a dominant presence, a guy who I am convinced, Chris, I don't know if we've talked about this on the show, I'm convinced he's going top 10. He wouldn't have accepted the invitation to Kansas City as part of this ruse to try to get somebody to take him in the top 10 because you don't want to be guy who sits in green room. No. Because if you fall out of the top 10, well, all the teams that you told, sorry, I'm not coming to visit you, what, are they going to take a flyer on you in the teens? So uh, the fact that he's going to Kansas City tells me that he knows, his agent knows, he's going in the top 10. Definitely. Definitely. And that's why they said we're not visiting anybody outside the top 10. They've known for a while. I, this is arguably the best player in the draft. That's why. I mean, it's out of the non If you take the quarterbacks out of the situation, Jalen Carter or Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech are the two best players in the draft. I, this, is, this is a guy that, Mike, I mean, there's, there's nothing he can't do here. You know, we're talking about like go back to the days of Jerome Brown and the Eagles or Warren Sapp with like flexible, bendable, explosive. Mike, you watch him on on film and you can go through a game and something I said on the podcast yesterday, like you could watch the game and you're going, wait, like I had to stop in the middle of one game and go, wait, is this am I watching a highlight tape or am I still on the game here? Right. I mean, big, powerful, you know, explosive off the ball can win with the pass rush any way you want. He can come around the edge like a great pass rusher. He can push the guy right back into your face. He can juke the guy and get around you that way. He's awesome against the run. He's never on the ground. He can two-gap people, Mike, and hold up a a big lineman and just go, oh, oh, wait, the running back's over here. Let me throw you that way and make the tackle. I mean, when he runs, he looks like he runs a 4'6", a low 4'6", of 315 pounds. He is, without a doubt, one of the best players in the draft, if not the best. And I would be shocked, Mike, if let's just, if he's, I would be shocked if he goes past five, really Seattle. I think Pete Carroll will take his shirt off and run to the podium. If Jalen Carter's there at five, I really do. And I, I, that's why I think they're probably That'd be a long run. That'd be a long <laughs> run. Right. He's, right. he's hits hey, faster than a four. You see Pete, when he puts that gum in his mouth, that man can run. So he might get there, <laughs> <laughs> but he's amazing. Mike, he um, really is. He's a, he's a can't miss prospect. And of course now you have to worry about, yeah, some of the off the field stuff and worry if, you know, the things you said, but well, the, the film speaks for itself. This comes down to development, draft and develop. What kind of influences do you have in your organization to speak to the better angels of a guy who may be inclined to do something he shouldn't do? Peter and I were talking last week on Friday about some noise that maybe the Steelers were talking to the Bears about moving up to number nine. Maybe the Steelers are thinking about trying to get Jalen Carter. And on the surface, not the kind of guy Mike Tomlin would want. But wait, maybe exactly the kind of guy Mike Tomlin would want because Mike Tomlin has a history of doing quietly. It. Right. Because we don't know about it until the guys leave and go somewhere else and, and go, give their coaches the butt. headaches and sleepless <laughs> right. nights. Right. Tomlin, Tomlin isn't going to play that. And I, there's a video floating around of Rick Spielman, the former Vikings GM, saying that, Carter's got high bust potential because when you watch the film, he doesn't turn it on every single play. Well, okay. You know what that means? That means right. you need a head coach that's going to cause you to turn it on every single play. Sure. And, and when hey, when everything's well, going well in Georgia and you're winning national championships, well, Kirby Smart doesn't have to worry about lighting a fire under Jalen Carter's ass. The defense is working well. We're not going to, you know, we're not, we, why waste our time? Well, Everything's fine. That's right. But where, if you, at the next level, yeah. you get a coach that, that, that makes it imperative that every single play goes out there and busts his ass. Right. And in the NFL, they're much better at, like, putting in other guys spelling guys wait we're gonna manage how you play this game in the snaps right you know yeah there's some drives where you look at and he gets tired at the end of the drive and I want to go okay you know look it's college football the team didn't huddle they're looking over at the 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 sideline everything's quick and he's been on the field for 12 plays in a row okay I mean every defensive tackle in the history of football gets tired after that every one so that's where again it it gets a little nitpicky there that's I, I don't always love that He's going to get in the NFL, and he's going to go. He's going to have to play a little more than 50% of the snaps of the game. They're going to make sure he's fresh for the right moments of the game. They're not going to be like, hey, it's play 14, and they're on the 37-yard line. We need you to go all out one more time, play 14 in a row. 
No, that doesn't work. That's not how it goes. Aaron Donald doesn't do that. He's in for three or four or five. They take him out for two or three. He's back in on that kind of drive. That's what they'll do with Jalen Carter. He, he's a can't miss, Mike. He's the best D tackle I've seen since I've been on this. Like I, Quinnen Williams was the number three pick a few years ago. He's better than Quinnen Williams. You know, one of the things I wrote at the end of the my little evaluation, I just wrote, this is not, this is like all time great type of talent. He has a chance to be that. And that's where, like, when I hear Steelers might want to trade up to number nine, I just go, yeah, so do I. I'd also like a billion dollars in the bank account. There, I just would be shocked if he's there at nine. Would be shocked, Mike. I just go, if Houston takes Tyree Wilson at two, which I wouldn't even be shocked if they win Jalen Carter at two, I would think Arizona's taking whoever's left over from that. They need that. And then Seattle, of course, if they're – if he's sitting there, I don't imagine Seattle or Detroit letting Jalen Carter go by, right? So that's where I just have a hard time thinking he falls really past five, but six at the most. I just hope he lands in a spot where he gets the coaching and the support he needs to be the best player he can be. I had a GM explain to me a few weeks ago, the risk of taking him high is if you do, you validate the behaviors that gave you the concerns in the first place, and that may make it harder sure. to turn him around. I wrote that it would be good for him to maybe slide a little bit, light a little fire, get him to recommit. Yeah, I Because, hear you. you know, his first thought's going to be, if he would be the fifth overall pick, all that stuff, all that, you know, all that noise, hey, I still got, I still got taken where I was taken. I can still live my life the way I want to live my life. He needs a coach and a support system that will get the most out of him, push him to be the best he can be. All right, let's do this. Let's take a break. We'll talk more about Chris's top defensive tackle prospects for the 2023 draft when PFG Live continues right after this. You know, if I'm Kalaja Kansi, I want nothing to do with any of this comparison to Aaron Donald. Although size is similar, weight is similar, hand is similar, speed, can't see one one hundredth of a second faster in the 40. They both went to pit. Aaron Donald, an all time great. Kalaja can't see number two on your list of defensive tackle prospects for the 2023 draft. I, I think it's unfair to compare anyone, sure. to even try to compare anyone to Aaron Donald. I mean, I think we knew. I remember thinking, like, is Aaron, I like, yeah, he's not a big guy, but so what? The guy. You just don't know until he gets to the NFL. That's right. But as he was sliding through the top 10, I remember it nine years ago. I'm thinking, this guy's going to be good. This guy's going to be good. And the Lions are the ones who should have taken him. The Vikings should have taken him. Multiple teams should have taken him. Uh, our team's going to be regretting not taking Kalaja Kants. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess he's going to go like lower than he should just based on his film, just because of like what you said. Even though the film is great, everyone's going to go, oh, I don't know. Like you said, it's 6'1", it's 281, you know, defensive tackle in the NFL. You know, yeah, the comparisons are rough. You're right. I mean, we're talking again against like, oh, I don't know, only the greatest defensive tackle in the history of football and Aaron Donald are in that convo, right? This guy, though, is as close as you're going to get to Aaron Donald that I've seen. I mean, this is bull in the china shop, Mike. He is rocked up. I mean, when I talk about explosive and twitchy and gets underneath people's pads, I mean, he's unbelievable. He has incredible lower body strength right you know he can overpower you make you miss you know he's got like i said in a punch and rip where he can throw you to the ground that's very impressive you can see how stout he is as an athlete i mean he can do it all there's only one negative and it's the size and it's like oh okay you know double teams every now and then he can get you know moved a little bit all right well that's that's you know you're gonna have to deal with that aaron donald gets moved on double teams too sometimes you're going to have to pay the piper for that, for the fact that he's going to bust through the line of scrimmage and, you know, f up 12 plays a game. Sorry, London. Right, there we you. go. Thank Boom. You. So that's what he's good for right there. Um, but, man, you talk about disruption, F the play up, Mike, in the backfield. He can do all of that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a roll. <laughs> well, and, and what's what's worse, to get moved by two guys or to blow the play up so badly that the guy with the ball 
goes where you were and you get downgraded for that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. right. And we see they do that to Aaron Donald because yes. he wasn't in his spot because he blew up the right, line. Right, he was he was six yards in the backfield and you know, they were like, well, he left a gap there. And it's like, well, I, he, nobody <laughs> thought he was ca- capable of just busting through that easy. Yeah, that's some of that here. And to, on that too, like, you know, the double teams, like I, I had heard some of the talk about the guy, oh, he's smaller and he worried. Like I came away watching games going, Damn, I'm it, the double teams are better than I expected. I mean, it, it's damn good. And he's so strong, too. A lot of the times he busts through the middle of them. So, you know, again, he's not the perfect specimen, but I think, Mike, he's somewhere, someone that goes somewhere between 10 and 25 in this draft for sure. And, uh, yeah, there's just not a lot of humans, you know, that are 281 that can move like that and, and be as explosive as this kid. Clemson's Brian Brzee is number three on your defensive tackle rankings. He was one of the darlings of the top ten of the mock drafts set in January, and this is why I hate mock drafts early. I hate mock drafts late. I hate mock drafts, period. But early on, the people in the media don't know. Then they start finding out what the teams think, and then the guy drops like a stone. I assume that's the explanation. He was just overrated by the people who evaluate these guys before the team evaluations catch up. Right. I, I would say maybe a little similar even to you know Will Anderson in my opinion and it's the same storyline usually with these guys number one recruit went to a big school pretty good he's got to be a top 10 pick he's got to be a tie he was number one from rivals.com so the NFL has to make him number one too right no no not necessarily the dude's real though let me just say that yeah he was you know unfairly put into a, a top 10 conversation that yeah he's not there as a football player but three, 298 pounds, 300 pounds, incredible athlete, can do everything on the defensive line, Mike. He's really like, a, you know, what you would call a three technique, I think, at the end of the day that can be on the edge of that guard between the guard and the tackle. And he can win with his quicks and his explosiveness off the ball. But he's also 300 pounds, and he's got a pretty strong upper body and his ability to hold people at bay in the run game. It's all really good. He's got very good change of direction skills. He's going to be a handful as an interior pass rusher. Yeah, but, you know, is he – I think when people talked about him, they thought, oh, this is a guy that's disrupting and just making plays, play after play after play. No, there's some flaws. You can watch a Notre Dame game and go, ooh, that guard had a good day against Brian Brzee. He did not necessarily dominate the way you'd like. Right. So there's some things there. But either way, you know, what I said about Kalaja Kansi will be the same thing with Brzee. He's 300 pounds. He's an unbelievable athlete. You know, there's really no glaring negative at him at all. And he does a lot of things really, really high level. So, yeah, no. Top 20 pick? No. 20 through 32 or towards the end of the first round? Yeah, that's kind of where I see Brian Brzee being drafted. Next up, Mozzie Smith from the Maize and Blue yeah, of Michigan. Right. Uh, one of the strongest guys in the draft. Does the strength translate to what you've seen on film? Well, n- not always. He's a freak of nature in the fact of he's 330 pounds and he's like a dancing bear. I mean, he can run. He's quick. He can change directions. As you can see right there, that doesn't look like a human being that's 330 pounds, at least to me. I mean, I know it looks really big, but it's – it's pretty put together. There's not sloppiness there. The, the Here's the thing that was shocking about him, Mike. You turn it on and you're shocked about how big and how athletic he is, but then you're also a little bit like, damn, he gets blocked a little too easily or moved by double teams easier than he should for his size. So there's a little bit of a power or an anchor element that was a little disappointing for the guy. At times seemed almost like not mad enough that he's getting blocked in my opinion. But again, like we're saying with a lot of these guys, you know, first off, it's a draft with not a lot of blue chip players. And this guy's huge. He's athletic and he can do a lot of different things on the defensive line. And I think because of that, yeah, he goes somewhere at the end of the first round. All right, let's take a break. We have been working our way through the various divisions, two teams per segment with their draft needs. We're going to look at the NFC East, starting with the Giants and the Cowboys. Oh, gee, Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.